here talking about uh, the issue with the water uh, that's coming obviously from Lake Okeechobee, five different types of algae, the blue green, the green, and all you know all the different colors uh, that he uh, did. And I'm looking through the projects here now. I'm trying to figure out how they're trying to sell this, talking about cleaner rivers. Now, I'm sure if they pave and they put in proper grading, it might stop that McDonald's cup from uh, reaching uh, reaching the waterways. Uh, you know, it well, might, might stop that straw, plastic straw, which, of course, I think should be a felony now uh, if you drop a plastic straw in the street. Oh, uh, yeah. The, the the black market is hoarding plastic <laughs> straws right now. You notice that millions of them. As a matter of fact, in many restaurants, you can't get a straw unless you ask for it. Yeah, yeah. And in some restaurants, they just don't hold them. True, but I mean overall, I mean you're talking about uh, river dollars or water dollars, which we're concerned about very much here mm -hmm. in our county. You've got 650 million dollars that has been allocated on our water issue here in St. Lucie and the Hatchie River on the on the west coast. Uh, they are doing uh, uh, building some dikes to hold more water. Uh, they've been trying to redevelop the Kissimmee River up on the top end so that the water doesn't come down to our area so fast. And of course, we're buying that large area south of Lake O to try to use that as a discharge and, and let the water soak up there and, and the reeds take all the algae out and then it ro rolls down to isn't Miami it, Bay. Isn't that where it went originally? The, uh, originally, you had a sea of grass, which was the south end of Lake O, mm -hmm. which the overflows would run out. But a lot of that land was reclaimed, mm -hmm. and it's great farming land. It's some of the richest soil potentially in the world oh, yeah. that is now being used for sugar and other things. So uh, we're going to try to discharge it a little bit to the, uh, to the southeast okay. and then run it down into the Everglades and then on down to Miami Bay. So uh, that's where $650 million have been allocated. So I don't know how a half-cent sales tax that is supposed to go for roads is going to matriculate down into our rivers and make any real difference. I don't know why that is an issue we should even be discussing mm -hmm. regarding any taxing since this has already been taken care of by the state. Ooh. Well, it sells. It sells. I mean, uh, I ha like I said, I have a pamphlet in my hand. Obviously. Uh, there's a cost to produce it. Uh, I'm going to assume that the city of Port St. Lucie footed the bill. Uh, I'm not quite sure that, you know, ethically it's fair to take my tax dollars to get more tax dollars because really that's what they're doing. I'm sure they're not, I'm sure they haven't spent an equal amount of money on why you want to vote against the half cent sales tax. But here it is uh, better roads, more sidewalks, cleaner rivers, proposed projects. And I'm not going to run through all of them. There are quite quite a number here, uh, but the total at the bottom, including contingency, is $88 million. I'm not quite sure how. I'm not quite sure how half a percent. Actually, it's half a cent. So it's actually what is that? Half of 100. Isn't it six? Point five now it'll make it seven cents even even right no we're at six percent now it'll be six and a half right. cents okay, half yeah cent. we'll be okay. at six and a half cents now and uh, we'll go to seven yeah, yeah I think it's projected to bring half in cent. something like seven or eight million dollars to the city wow. maybe a little bit more than that to the I've city seen or some to numbers the county? Like, to the city the county a lot of pennies <laughs> the county's getting a little bit less I believe but and I think I may be low on those numbers if somebody out there is listening to us mathematicians please just check it on the uh, city website or the county yeah. website as to how much that half cent will produce. Yeah. Okay. Right. But today, in uh, in today's dollars, mm -hmm. we're talking about eighty-eight million dollars in projects that they are proposing. What is that? That's over ten years. So that's probably that's eight point eight years. is what the city would be getting then, because if you get eight point eight times yeah, ten, it'd be eighty-eight that's million. That's in today's dollars. Remember how they wanted to move that uh, old house from. Uh, oh, county over, yeah, over on the uh, Westmoreland side. To the, for the, to the Pruitt uh, Fish Camp or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. And initially it was like $400,000. When did they, they finally spend it? Seven fifty. Okay, and that was just one year later. Yeah, and the okay. same building. Same building, same distance, but double the money. Yeah, and somebody mentioned that that was a... Uh, infested building that was being moved but i <laughs> guess that got got snapped out so um we're still waiting from calls from so any of you listeners out there on uh 
this particular subject, and I think we're going to touch on Amendment 1, Amendment 2, but I think right now Cliff wants to take us to a break. Yeah, let's take a little break, and uh, I know somebody out there has got to be a little fired up about this. Whether for or against it, give us a call, 340-1590. We're open for discussion. That's what it's really all about. We'll be right back. As a woman, you believe that you can accomplish all that a man can accomplish and more without the help of the government. You just might be a Republican. If you believe that you should have a say in your child's education and that you should have a choice as to where your child is educated, you just might be a Republican. To learn more, go to stlucygop.org and click on Being a Republican. St. James Christian Academy is fully accredited and is now enrolling for fall, preschool through 12th grade, providing students with excellent education in a safe Christian environment for over 17 years. They offer dual enrollment, a Becca curriculum, transportation, affordable aftercare, STEM classes, sports, dance, and karate. St. James Christian Academy is now accepting fall enrollment applications. Plus, ask about their free tuition scholarships. Be a part of the excitement. Schedule a tour today or visit us at stjameschristianacademy.com. Welcome back to Issues and Answers in St. Lucie County. And once again, two hosts, Michael Loeb and Mark Gotts. Which one's which today? Tonight? I believe uh, Mike Loeb is on the right. And Mark is on the left. On your right. On your right. Yeah, I hate to be on the left, but no, but, Mark. Uh, Mark's Mark's in the red not shirt. Not one to be on. <laughs> if you're watching on the radio, radio the Mark is in the red shirt. And where is your red baseball cap? If you're watching on the radio, Mark is wearing the red shirt. Does make America great again on your shirt? Uh, oh. Close. Oh, okay. That's close. Just kidding. <laughs> now, Mark, this is not your first uh, uh, foray into uh, making sure that uh, government spends wisely, doesn't overtax. As a matter of fact, you've been uh, doing this for quite a couple, quite a number of years, uh, getting up in front of the city council down in Port St. Lucie, uh, talking about wasteful spending, talking about taxation, questioning things uh, that they're spending on, things in the budget. Matter of fact, I believe uh, Greg, uh, Mayor Greg Orovac, before he met you, actually had hair. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's. That's God, just a rumor that's just going rumor. around, Mike. That's just not rumor. necessarily true. Just a rumor. Uh, and there's a lot of talk about things that get pushed through uh, in the consent agenda. Mm-hmm. So can you talk a little bit about that? I mean, we're talking about half-cent sales tax, but let's talk about taxation and government spending uh, in totality here. Well, going going back, I mean, you talk about roads, and that's the, the subject with the half-cent sales tax. In fact, it was the half-cent sales tax that they tried two years ago was set on roads, too. But back then, the uh, city of Port St. Lucie uh, took $3.5 million out of their roads and bridges budget to pay for their mistakes out in the West, Digital Domain, BGTI, uh, Torrey Pines. And uh, I had gotten up to speak against that for the simple reason is I couldn't understand how they could take – out of a budgeted item being roads and bridges where they get their money from the gas tax and then move that into the general fund. Uh, but obviously that, that didn't do anything. And I don't know whether they put that $3.5 million back. But once again, when they, when they bring up roads <coughs> and they bring up sidewalks, you have to really keep your eye on government as to where they're spending money. I mean, another issue that I spoke on several years ago uh, was when digital domain fell through, there was an insurance settlement on that, and the city got $1.5 million, which should have gone to reduce the outstanding bonds on digital domain. Instead, it went into this Westmoreland project that we were talking about uh, before the Pruitt Fish Camp and, and, and what they're going to do next to Botanical Gardens there. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Once again, poor allocation of assets. So the, the city has a budget of about $550 million, and that's a lot of money to have. And roads only cost about $500,000 a mile per lane. That's all? That's all. So uh, there's, well, there's just, dollars Virginia around. Avenue forever to get fixed. <clears throat> I remember for years and years and years and years, Virginia Avenue 
uh, it was you'd come in from the turnpike mm -hmm. and you'd be on Okeechobee Road. And uh, now you're on Virginia Avenue when you come out, and you have to cut off to the left, to bare left, to get onto Okeechobee Road. Mm -hmm. But it was forever those roads were, were being worked on. And I, I remember uh, another road project where we watched them, and they put in a beautiful sidewalk. And then a couple of inspectors, are, they're looking at it and shaking their heads, and those guys had to tear up that whole sidewalk and rebuild it because there was something off by maybe an inch or something. You know, we're, we're seeing all this money being wasted if they're going to do it over and over and over again, one sidewalk, you know, and, and then just take the money from that's allocated. for So, so there's, there's something wrong with this, this amendment, right? Well, what's wrong with the amendment is that basically government will take as much money from you as you can possibly give them. Oh. And they will spend every penny. Right. And consequently... They have plenty of assets. Once again, uh, the city of Port St. Lucie has, I think, a $500, uh, $500 million budget. Mm -hmm. I think the county has somewhere close to that. Mm -hmm. So it's reallocation of assets. We have uh, almost 10,000 acres of property that are off our tax rolls in St. Lucie County. Mm -hmm. And this is because it's either government that owns it or the environmentalists own it or some nonprofit owns it. All of these pieces of property are off our tax rolls. Many of these things the county owns. So we should be able to take some of those pieces of property, mm -hmm. and about 1,100 acres of it are on South Hutchinson Island, and sell that off and make up whatever yeah. difference we need for roads or whatever budget shortages Since we Since they don't have a bridge from Port St. Lucie over to the island, property on the island uh, is more profitable to, to sell uh, into real estate or condos or something. Right? Oh, absolutely. Uh, not only that, you sell the property, make a profit on the sale, and then you get the tax revenues from what's built upon it, plus your impact fees and everything else. Right. And one of the uh, one of the prime pieces of property that came off the tax rolls is down in tradition a couple of years ago, a uh, piece of property in front of the defunct digital domain uh, that got uh, purchased by the county for the... Uh, City tax collector. Oh, the the tax uh, the tax collector for the county. Yeah. Yeah, oh, that's right. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. the county tax collector. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was a uh, interesting deal. I think that's about a six or seven million dollar project, which uh, they bonded out. Well, I think they purchased the land for uh, I don't know five hundred thousand dollars. Was it five hundred thousand dollars they purchased land? For? It was a lot of money, and the tax revenue. If you just go down uh, a block or two, it's it's prime commercial real estate. Oh yeah. Uh, that has quite a number of stores on it, quite a number of tax revenue. If you just add up the tax revenue, you just, you know, you, it makes you scratch your head to say why, first of all, <coughs> we do more and more things online these days. Why is it necessary to build another building for the tax collector to do things that most of us are doing online? Okay. I agree with you, Mike. I mean, this is the question. So we've got our first caller tonight, uh, John on line one. John, go ahead. Thank yes, you to come thank to the show. Uh, it's not that half percent uh, more that they want. It's the total, the 7% that bothers me. I, um, I'm on a very fixed income, and every little bit hurts. Uh, I, um, I also noticed that the sidewalks that they put in are in areas where you'll never see anybody walking uh, on, on main busy streets where there's, you know, I mean, just people don't walk from the house on these streets. John, do you have any specific uh, project that you're talking where about? Seen, where, where I've seen the sidewalks? Yes, sir. Yeah, along Bayshore, between uh, Prima Vista, going around to um, where it meets Oroso. Mm -hmm. They put sidewalks, um, I believe, Selvitz by um, St. Andrews there. Uh, just here, there, and everywhere. I mean, no place where you, where you actually see people walking. Well, you know? one of the one of the priorities for sidewalks that I know of well, I is think, I think they location on, to schools. I think they should be on streets where there are schools or children waiting for the buses, instead of having them walk along the street or on the grass, bordering the streets. Because when cars pass them, they don't they don't even they don't even move over a little bit, to, just in case the kid just swaggers or decides to turn out onto the street. Um, I think I think it's you know I mean if. The, of course, they should have sidewalks along, uh, you know, where I came from up in Boston, you walked along the sidewalk and you went from store to store. Uh, everything was, you know, convenient and close. Mm -hmm. You have to drive from strip mall to strip mall 
and a lot of them you can only come out the way you went in. I mean, very little foresight and planning, you know. Um, I, I just think that um, some of the things that they want the money for, I think we could uh, hold off for a good long time or do without. Um, I know the roads are a fortune to expand and to, you know, and to redo, but uh, we've got, I think, close to 180,000 people here now. I've that's here correct. And that's in Port St. Lucie. In the county, we've got almost 300,000. Exactly. And and I know that there's room for more, but the streets can't handle it. Um, we're backed up in traffic a quarter of a mile some places, you know. Um, the, well, I'm, um, sure, I'm sure, John, the uh, traffic is not as bad as you remember from uh, Boston. Oh. I was younger then. <laughs> <laughs> we got lost every time we went to Boston. And I could, I could, uh, I could afford a full tank of gas, you know. <laughs> John, but, eighteen uh, cents a gallon. Yeah. Well, yeah. the full seven cents. I think six of it goes obviously to. Well, when the I state. when I was a kid, it was seventeen cents a gallon, and sometimes it would wow. it'd be a gas war, and you could get it for fifteen cents. Oh. So for fifty. Well, cents, you talk about the total cost of gas back then, John. You're talking about per gallon. Per gallon. Yeah. yeah. I'm talking about per gallon. Yeah. Yeah, we got more than that in tax now. I know it. I know it. We get over thirty yeah. cents worth of tax on every gallon of gas that goes out. Eighteen, eighteen cents to the federal government, twelve cents to locals. I understand. You know, uh, you mentioned that what can a dollar buy? It doesn't buy much. It'll buy each and every item in Dollar Tree. <laughs> <laughs> Everything. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> well, John, you were talking about traffic. Uh, have you have you driven St. Lucie West Boulevard recently with their Smart Light program that they have there? Uh, smart. Um, listen, I live off of uh, Prima Vista and Bayshore, and I have to go west on Prima Vista to the bridge, you know, by uh, right. that crosses the turnpike. And, and every day it's a nightmare. Let, let me tell you how it, how it is. Uh, they used to let the left turns turn and then, and then stop and let the onward traffic go on both sides, coming and going, east and west. Right. That's what they do all over the world. Go ahead, John. Well, they, they don't do that here. That's they, correct. One side, the left turn goes, and then the then the forward traffic goes, and then the forward traffic stops, uh, going east, and then the west traffic uh, stops and goes, and then after a while, the left turn is allowed. I mean, it just doesn't make any sense at all. I don't think they have a clue what they're doing. This is the smart system that you're talking about. That's exactly how it works. Where we are accustomed to having our left turn lanes. Both go at the same time when they're in yeah. facing traffic, and be the the first to lead out, and then the through streets, the the through traffic goes after that, and then when that ends, the other side goes. Well, that is not the way it is in St. Lucie West. We never know what light is going to give us an arrow or a go sign at any one time. It's never consistent, and well, uh, it, it just causes a lot of confusion. And you never know if you're going to get through, being the third car in line. I talked to. Uh, Mayor Orovec, you know, um, nice man. Mm -hmm. And I, me I mentioned the traffic, and he said, "Well, the new system saves us nine seconds, or something like that." <laughs> I, think I don't know. I don't know who's I've, saving the nine seconds yet, because yeah, I yet. can tell you the traffic is backed up from uh, Kashmir all the way back to Bethany, which is where the Publix is. Oh yeah, every day I travel that direction, yeah. east and west. Um, and, and I tell you, I used to go down Marion to Ashur. And then turn south and then right mm -hmm. over the over the bridge. Well, you can't turn there anymore. So there's only one way for me to get on to Prima Vista to get to St. Lucie West, and that puts me right in that backed up traffic. You know, it's it's and unbelievable. It's, Even when we didn't have the season, John, it was terrible. Yeah, you're so. right. And the snowbirds aren't back. You know, that's, that's going to be fun. They're coming. Give them a couple of now, weeks. Now you know that. Uh, uh, Sir Clifton is from Massachusetts, don't you? No, Clif Cliff is from Massachusetts? People hold yeah. that against me because everybody in Massachusetts thinks that you're born a Democrat up there. <laughs> from, and, uh, and, and, I, and, I, and I told them I, I, wanted to, I wanted to be independent. I didn't want Cliff, to. You, Cliff, you work for a conservative station. All there is is Rush Limbaugh and all these. No, that, that's not true. You've got uh, Mark what? here and... And huh? Michael. You got Rudy Howard. You got Rudy Howard. Yeah. Look at that. He's not that necessarily Rudy? conservative. Yeah. Rudy, Rudy Howard is one out of five different programs that are all right-wing conservatives. 
You got the show. Oh, so why should they have it all? Right, give it to Rudy. Okay. Why shouldn't they have it all? You mean? Yeah. Well, no. Why should? Why should? Uh, <laughs> well, he, even even the fellow that's selling uh, stocks and bonds, all he talks about is bashing Democrats. You know that. Well, I, that's the I, that's I, that's I, the thing I've noticed. I've noticed that on Swap Shop, people crazy. try to get a word in. They'll be mad I about something. I called him up one day. I said to him, "You're a businessman, and here you are bad mouthing Democrats." You don't accept them as customers. I said I wouldn't buy. I wouldn't do business with you. <laughs> just, the way, just the way you're talking. And he says, "Well, why don't we have a beer?" And I said, "Well, I don't drink uh, Republican champagne." <laughs> <laughs> Too bubbly. Very good, John. Listen, we appreciate you calling in tonight. I and what do you think it. about the half cent sales tax? Though that was the discussion tonight. Well, I'm, against, I'm against it. You're against oh, it? Okay. okay. No, I, I can't afford it. You know. It's, it's everybody. You hear people talk. Oh well, it's only a dollar a day. It's only fifty cents. Mm-hmm. It's only ten bucks a year. Five right. bucks. It all adds up, and it all. And it's not even going to go the way you want it to go. Right. You know? My mm-hmm. income does not change. It it doesn't get any. Every month it's the same thing, and when things get uh, you know four or five bucks a gallon or you know uh, anything goes up, groceries. And incidentally, groceries are taxed if they are heated. Or if you're eating food on premises right. in a restaurant, uh, if uh, you know you buy a, a, a pre-cooked chicken or something, it's all taxed. Everything is taxed. You know, what, what is the uh, restaurant tax? Is that six and a half percent? That's six and a half percent. Also, that's correct. Yeah, and it's the same tax throughout the county, John. And yeah. the only way to do that is vote Republican because socialism is not an option. Okay. All right. Uh, thank you yeah. very much for calling tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank I'm you going to have a good night. Republican, and I'm going to poke my eye with a sharp stick. <laughs> okay. All right. John, don't do that. You're gonna, that'll, you, that'll be an EMS call, and then we've got the hospital and all that stuff. That's and then terrible. you would have to pay for that, too. Yeah, okay. I know. Yeah. But, but uh, ratings would go sky high. <laughs> <laughs> but don't do it, John. <laughs> Make sure your wallet is on the opposite side of wherever Cliff is sitting. <laughs> Amen, brother. All right. Bye-bye. Be well. Oh, Oh, that's go. good. John sounds like a uh, a real patriot and uh, somebody who's paying attention to what's going on. He's a true he, New Englander. Right. Now, he brought up a good point uh, talking about how they sell this. Oh, it's only a dollar. It's only this. Yeah, it's only, only a few a, dollars. It's only, only a pizza. Only a half a penny. It's only the yeah. cost of a pizza. Yeah. You know, we hear yeah. that every few years. Don't worry about it. It's only the cost of a couple of pizzas. How often? The cost of yeah. going to the movies. Yeah. But the problem is when you're sitting at home, mm-hmm. Not having your pizza, and not going somebody in government is. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so on the nights when you're going hungry, just be, you know, just, just and remember. And you got to be careful how you talk about pizza these days with all of the uh, conspiracy theories out there. <laughs> <laughs> but on the nights when you're going hungry, just know that there's somebody in government eating your pie. <laughs> uh, See, so you wanted a piece of the pie to begin with. And sure. You get it, but they'll take it. Well, listen, I'm proud of the citizens of St. Lucie County because two years ago when they tried this half-cent sales tax, Uh, it got beat about uh, 58 to 42, I think. So it didn't fly then. Didn't fly then. And then you also had the the fire district had a non-ad valorem tax that they were trying to pass that got beat 60-40. Wow. So I think that the the citizens of St. Lucie County are paying attention. As yeah. a matter of fact, when you look at those amendments that we've got, which is now 1 through 13 are constitutional amendments, mm-hmm. <clears throat> and then number 14 is the one we're talking about tonight, the half-cent sales tax. So basically the two that really help citizens are 1 and 2. Mm-hmm. So you vote yes on 1 and 2 and no on the rest of them. Okay. Very simple. Very simple format. Now the half-cent sales tax will also require 60% to pass, correct? No, I no? believe it's a majority. Are we really? Yeah. Wow. I think then 50, 50 plus 1 uh, would, would pass that tax. It's only constitutional amendments that require 60% now. That was uh, passed, I think, by a constitutional amendment. So I think it's only 50, 50% plus 1. Well, that makes it worrisome. Yes. Hopefully I'm wrong. If anybody out if there anybody knows there that I'm there. wrong, please call in and tell me I'm wrong. I would appreciate that very much. Going back to what we were working on last week, uh, I'd like to d- discuss uh, an amendment number one, which is uh, one of my favorites for the simple reason is it gives us an extra $25,000 tax exemption on homes 
that range between 100 and 125,000. Um, this will will save a taxpayer about $360, I think it is, right. every year on their taxes. And uh, once again, more money in the taxpayer's pocket means more money in the economy. Right. Uh, now, I received a couple of messages uh, this past week uh, telling me that, you know, the other side of the equation, as I always like to say, to every action there is a equal and opposite reaction, is that government will figure out how to get their pound of flesh somehow, whether it be raising uh, taxes and fees on businesses, raising impact fees, uh, you know, and, and that's a good question. If anybody out there knows where all this impact fee money goes, I'd like to know because I understand the, just the cost of clearing a lot in Port St. Lucie is astronomical. Impact fees have been around since 1985. Uh, they were part of the um, uh, starting the devel uh, developments of regional impact, and the concern was that back then uh, the state was developing so quickly that the cities could not keep up. Because way back when in the 70s, mm -hmm. if you did a project, the city brought your water and sewer out to you and improved the roads. So they came up with this formula back in 85 and decided that uh, they were going to have uh, the items that were needed with new development, that new development would require, were roads, water and sewer, schools, parks, and I think one or two others. And so consequently, when a developer comes in, he has the ability to either make these improvements on the roadways or the water, or bond it off by giving the dollars to uh, the county or the city. And these impact fees are supposed to be for the specific areas around the development. They're not fungible where they can be used on the other side of the county or the other side of the city. They're supposed to be apropos to the development and the causes from that development. So each impact fee for an area should have a separate account, although they never do. I remember reading stories when I was living in Broward County. They would go to improve in, uh, a intersection with paving and everything else and they had been collecting impact fees on it for five or ten years or whatever it is and they went into the account and all the impact fee monies were missing uh oh so obviously the taxpayers had to pick up the difference to increase that intersection so these um once again you have to keep your eye on government they take 30 to 40 cents of every dollar you make and you need to pay attention to them See, now in the private sector, that money missing is called embezzled, and usually somebody goes to jail. You mean you could go to jail for that? Usually somebody goes to jail. Is, this, is, is there a difference between the federal level and the local level? Regarding what, with, Cliff, with going the, to jail? Money, with the money disappearing. Oh, with the money disappearing? No, money disappears at every level funds. of government. Oh. You know, you've, uh, you've got... I didn't want to sound like asking an accusational type of a question... But you answered it for me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, look, uh, I always say government's main responsibilities are security mm -hmm. to the people, right. water and air cleanli cleanliness, and roads. And other than that, everything's an extra, and that includes parks and, and all of these other envir environmental issues that are going on here that are costing the government substantial monies. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you look at the state government, almost a third of our dollars go to uh, medicine and Medicaid at the state level, mm -hmm. and that's a that's a big chunk of dollars. That's over thirty billion dollars a year. So if we could do a better job reallocating those assets, we mm -hmm. might have more for schools and for other areas that might enhance our our communities. And just a few weeks ago, we had in the gentleman talking about telemedicine. Mm -hmm. So if you want to go back to the YouTube uh, channel, and, yeah, uh, yeah, uh, Paul Gray, yeah, Paul Gray, and review uh, the whole telemedicine. That's how much money thing. we could save there. The archives right. of this show are on YouTube, and uh, you've been around for, for a while now, and, and there's a bunch of shows up there. Just look for Issues and Answers in St. Lucie County when you go to WPSL-TV on YouTube. And uh, and with that, I, I guess I'm getting the signal. <laughs> <laughs> They're telling me in the booth back there that <laughs> we need to take a break here. Issues and Answers in St. Lucie County. You can still chime in, 340-1590. Would you like some more taxes piled upon you? It's only a half a cent here and there. 340-1590. Now is your opportunity to say something.
as a woman, you believe that you can accomplish all that a man can accomplish and more without the help of the government, you just might be a Republican. If you believe that you should have a say in your child's education and that you should have a choice as to where your child is educated, you just might be a Republican. To learn more, go to stlucygop.org and click on Being a Republican. St. James Christian Academy is fully accredited and is now enrolling for fall, preschool through 12th grade, providing students with excellent education in a safe Christian environment for over 17 years. They offer dual enrollment, a Becca curriculum, transportation, affordable aftercare, STEM classes, sports, dance, and karate. St. James Christian Academy is now accepting fall enrollment applications. Plus, ask about their free tuition scholarships. Be a part of the excitement. Schedule a tour today or visit us at stjameschristianacademy.com. WPSL Storm Team 5 Treasure Coast weather is brought to you this hour by Seacoast Air Conditioning. There's a slight chance for some scattered showers into the overnight hours. Tonight, look for mostly cloudy skies and lows near 72. Winds will be out of the east at around 5 miles per hour and calming after midnight. Through the day tomorrow for your Tuesday, a 30% chance of scattered showers. Thunderstorms are possible throughout the day. Look for a mix of sun and clouds and temperatures near 90. Light east-southeast winds are expected at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Looking at the extended forecast Wednesday and Thursday, still with that 30% chance of scattered showers and thunderstorms look for a mix of sun and clouds throughout the day and temperatures again in the upper 80s weather this hour is brought to you by seacoast air conditioning your hometown air conditioning company since 1982 for repairs or a whole new system call 772-466-2400 comfort crisis don't roast call seacoast The show's called Issues and Answers in St. Lucie County. 340-1590 is the number. You've got about 11 minutes to uh, respond to some of the things that we're talking about. So once again, I'm going to hand it right back over to Mark Gotts and Michael Lowe. Thank you, Cliff. Thank you, Cliff. Michael, why don't you go over the uh, ballot language once again on Amendment 1, which is the increased homestead property tax exemption. I think uh, Great idea, our listings Mark. would like that. Great idea. Uh, yeah, we had brought up, uh, we've brought up uh, Amendment 1 a couple times tonight and uh, just figured that if you weren't listening last week, shame on you, but if you weren't listening last week, uh, we'll let's go over it again because uh, as number one, we think it's the most important uh, amendment on the ballot. Anyway, the language is proposing an amendment to the state constitution to increase the homestead exemption by exempting the assessed valuation of homestead property greater than 100000 and up to 125000 for all levies other than school district levies. The amendment shall take effect January 1st, 2019. Okay. Now, this was proposed by the Florida State Legislature in uh, voting yes uh, on Amendment 1. Uh, it raises the exemption from 100000 to 125000 uh, except for your school taxes. Voting no uh, keeps the current homestead exemption structure uh, and retains 50,000 th- exemption rather than raising it to 75,000. And by the way, those school taxes are between 30 and 40 cent, 40 percent of our tax bills. If you if you take the three categories that come out as far as uh, school related, uh, you'll find that you've got about 30 to 40 percent of your tax bill goes well, to schools. Well, you can blame that on charter <laughs> schools because they steal all the money. <laughs> well, we're not going to go into that tonight, <laughs> <laughs> but. Uh, this was, and, and we're reading really out of uh, some information that was provided by the James Madison Institute in, uh, in Jacksonville, Florida. And what I like is there's a pro and a con that they give to each of these amendments. And I've got to read you the con on Amendment 1 because I like the way it starts. The con is to give money back to the taxpayers, local leaders must adjust to a lower revenue stream. Doesn't that make sense? <laughs> Sounds like a con to me. Sounds like a con to me. Why would you want? Why would you want government to work efficiently? I mean, it says opponents argue that property taxes act as the main source of revenue for local governments that need the funds to provide necessary public services. It seems to me that the utilities departments have a large amount of uh, dollars that they charge us for services, which are, are outside of our ad valorem taxes, just as another area of revenue stream. 
Uh, but aside from the funding issue embedded in tax breaks, opponents claim that Amendment 1 is misleading. Rather than the homestead exemption applying to all homeowners, the measure would benefit half of the homeowners across the state. So only half of us would receive this benefit. The other half being non-homesteaders, meaning uh, snowbirds, investors, uh, people with second and third properties. Uh, that's true. However, this argument only matters if you view taxes as a taxpayer versus taxpayer dynamic. Ultimately, the amendment cuts taxes for Floridians. Lastly, some opponents believe that tax policy should not be executed through a constitutional referendum. Well, I think our taxes and our homestead are all constitutional items, and so I don't know why this would be any different. If anyone would like to come on the pro side of this uh, issue, or uh, even on the con side of this issue, or the half cent sales tax, we still have a few minutes left in the show and would love to hear your call. Well, I, I mentioned uh, uh, something on the con side before about uh, our local uh, governments raising fees on business. You know, uh, every uh, permit, uh, business permit, would, you know, conceivably uh, be increased. Uh, the cost of doing business, the cost of the cost of replacing your hot water heater, which to me I find very offensive because you have to pull a permit. Now, permit is spelled no differently than permit, okay, which is to say that I or you would oh, have wow. to pay the government to permit me to maintain my household, to permit me to take a hot shower on a daily basis, to permit me to replace something that has failed in the house. I find that highly offensive. Well, especially when you're going through repairs in your house, and of course there are permit fees on many items that you that are actually repairs. I think if you're doing something that's a capital improvement, you know, you're building a room or something like that, that's a different story. But for general repairs, which is the water heater argument, mm -hmm. there really should not be any permits on it. The water heater, and uh, in the case of me, who just replaced an air conditioner. Uh-oh. <laughs> Who just replaced an air conditioner, which is a traumatic experience. <laughs> That's a hot one. Uh, yeah, they're, they're, you know, you have all these permitting. But at least we did have somebody come out from the city uh, to take a look, believe it or not. Well, depending on what you had done in your air conditioning, yes, that would be important because obviously your, your uh, unit outside, your condensing unit, uh, that, that runs out there is uh, something that's hooked up with electric and plumbing and uh, hopefully operates properly, otherwise you can get awful wet on the inside. But once again, I, as a homeowner, need to make sure that that is done properly. The same thing with the hot water heater. I have to make sure that it's done properly. I don't believe that the city uh, in a feudal, you know, unless, unless we're a feudal system, needs to come out and, and make sure that things are done properly in my house. That's, my, that's the responsibility of home ownership. Licensed contractors. Oh Licensed my. and insured contractors. Uh, absolutely. Uh, That's what you want to look for. Mm -hmm. And we've got a lot of good ones here in the yeah. county. I absolutely. Yeah. We have, uh, I've, I've run into numerous great contractors mm -hmm. in this county. Even with all the work going on, you can still find a good mm -hmm. air conditioning repair or plumbing repair. There are a lot of great contractors here. So the Second Amendment uh, on the constitutional amendments is limitations on property tax exemptions and this is basically uh, taking a law that's sunsetting it's proposing an amendment to the state constitution to permanently re permanently retain previous provisions currently in effect which limit property tax assessment increases on special non-homestead real, real property except for school district taxes to 10 percent each year if approved, the amendment removes the scheduled repeal of such provision in 2019 and shall take effect Janu January 1, 2019. This is something that's already in the law, and it always amazes me that only tax reductions sunset. I've never, <laughs> I've never seen tax increases sunset. Uh, you, you never see these things go away. What a yes vote means on this is that the measure removes the January 2019 sunset provision on the property tax assessment limitation of 10% each year for real property. And this, is, this affects our businesses predominantly. This is non-homesteaded property. Mm -hmm. 
And so anything that's going to put a few more dollars into the pockets of those people who are businesses here in St. Lucie County, I'm all for. Most importantly, uh, with, Amendment one, with Amendment 1 saying that it benefits only half the uh, homeowners, uh, Amendment 2 benefits the other half. Uh, Amendment 2 will benefit the renters because if a landlord so, or an investor that owns a home that rents out, if his taxes go up, he most assuredly will pass that along to uh, anybody that's renting from His him. His tenants, absolutely. Okay? And it says so, obviously, uh, right in here, and the proponents of this uh, you know, list renters as somebody that they have to protect, that this would protect, which is interesting because when it comes to a business, raising corporate taxes somehow never trickles down to everybody. Okay, they never look at that as uh, a problem. They always want to raise corporate taxes as a, as a way of raising revenue, not realizing that raising corporate taxes just gets passed along to the end user, which is uh, you and me and, and Cliff here. Well, they feel that corporations do not uh, vote, and in many cases that's true. The people who are in corporations vote, but not corporations. They don't no. get a vote. Corporations don't get a vote. And the corporations can't control their employees to vote the way that they would vote if they could, right? Well, they could if they were unions. Ah. That always uh, uh, adds into it. But uh, but then, of course, you're bringing up Citizens United ah. and the way people form. And that would be a whole other whole show. A whole other show. A whole other show. So looking forward to next week's show. Brett. Yeah, you're going to have to continue or, or something here because uh, I don't I don't think it's uh, it, it's all over yet. We haven't got to the booth to vote about it yet. Well, and, we and, uh, and we should bring in somebody as a uh, as a guest for this. Issue. I haven't. Any okay, ideas? well we heard John. Uh, he doesn't like it, but uh, you gave the opportunity to somebody to speak on behalf of it. If you think we should pay it, if you think we should, why aren't you calling us? I guess the taxpayers in this county are smarter than people think. Yeah. Which makes me feel good, which means the discussion we're having on the half-cent sales tax, which is Amendment 14. Didn't, didn't work a few hopefully years ago. Hopefully didn't work a few years ago, and hopefully the taxpayers are still paying attention, and I'm sure that they are. You know what? I think once in a while we can trust the taxpayers, you know, when they vote. Yeah. Especially as, when they vote their pocketbook. As long, yeah, vote your pocketbook, and always remember to vote. Vote every opportunity you get. That's your only true connection to your elected officials. And you've got what until the ninth? I think the ninth to get registered. If you're not registered, you'll hear the supervisor of elections uh, office uh, promotions uh, between now and the midterms, <laughs> just weeks away. <laughs> Just a matter of days. That's right. Vote well, by mail starts the first I, week of October. I'm you, hearing music in the background, yeah. which means it's time to wrap up. And just remember, 132 days, uh, shopping days to uh, Groundhog Day. Uh -huh. Very important. You've been listening to Issues and Answers in St. Lucie County with Mark Gotts and Michael Lowe. you got to get these two together. A couple more weeks here, of course. Hey! Don't forget to get out and vote if you're tired of all this mess, right? Thanks for joining us.